What's up, everybody? Thank you for watching, subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing, doing all the YouTube things that make YouTube such a spectacular place. Moa here, and we are back. And this is the Invoke series where I brew a new deck every video with uh, one of the Invoke cards from Neon Dynasty. So the first one, if you didn't see it, was Mono Black Control, which uh, was Invoke Despair, and we added some artifacts and enchantments to play Soul Transfer. Um, the second one was Turbo Invoke, which was also uh, basically a Mono Black Control deck, but we splashed blue and red in order to copy Invoke Despair and then cast it multiple times in the same turn in the same game and then try to kill people using only that, casting only Invoke Despair, which was sweet. You guys have to check that out. And then the last video was... Um, Orzov control black white uh, deck that I was calling ambitious mana base control because we have the four casting costs four black casting costs invoke despair four white casting costs devastating mastery and because that's not ambitious enough we shuffle all those cards back in with the blue spell witness the future but uh yeah that was really sweet uh check those videos out for sure today's deck is hands down my favorite of all of these of all the ones I'm going to show you in this entire series and I know that we referred to the last one as Ambitious Mana Base. However, this takes the cake because this is the first deck to feature not one, but two different invokes in the same deck. So, here it is. It's Boros Reanimator, where we put a bunch of big creatures in the graveyard, and then we use Invoke Justice to bring them back, and then we use Invoke Calamity to bring Invoke Justice back to bring more creatures back. I'm not going to drone on much about this deck because it's pretty self-explanatory, but the one thing I certainly will say is that there are just tons and tons of moving parts with this deck. So while this is the list I'm currently working with, I'm definitely open to the idea that we could change around the number of copies on a bunch of these cards, potentially all of them. I mean, the one thing I do know is you probably want four of each Invoke and then four Doomscar, but the rest of this could really go any way. Um, so column one, I'm going with four, four, and four on the card draw slash discard. Um, it feels right. I, we, we could probably go with one less windfall maybe if we, if we needed to. Um, obviously the second column is our invokes. So those are going to stay four and four. Um, third column is our like sweeper slash board control stuff. Um, and this is where like having two, four doom scars seems right, but having two farewell and two devastating mastery, um, Sometimes it feels like not enough. Like you can just go digging and digging for one of the four of those and not come up with it. But then again, there's a lot of games where you have two or three of them in hand too, and you just can't um, you can't do anything with. It. So if I was going to make any changes with this, I might go to three and three. Maybe cut one windfall and maybe cut one. I don't know. Maybe one Jenga taxes. I'm not sure. Um, our fourth column is the lands and. What I will say is that there should be four of the pathways in here. That was an absolute mistake. So um, I'm gonna when I post a deck list, I'm gonna post a slightly different one than this. When you see it in the description, go one less plains, one less mountain, and add two more pathways because there needs to be four. And a quick note on the fury, what is it? The snarl or whatever fury calm snarl, whatever the card is, however you pronounce that. Um, there should be four of those in there over the Alpine Meadow. So there should be four of those in one Alpine Meadow because it's just infinitely better. However, Moa is a free-to-play player. We are a free-to-play channel and wasting rares on these horrible lands that nobody uses and kind of suck feels bad. So um, that would be the perfect deck list. I'm going to post that one with four and one instead of one and four like I have. I only own one and I'm certainly not going to buy one or uh, trade one in because rare cards are so valuable and... Yeah, that card just, like I said, sucks. But in this particular deck, it uh, it actually is necessary. So, And the last column, of course, are our fatties, our big monsters, the guys we are going to cheat in a play and then beat people down with. Um, they're all legendary, so you can't have more than one in play at once, which is a problem. Um, Velomachus is pretty clearly the best one because it allows you to cast more spells, and then sometimes you can chain off invokes with it. Or at the very least, you'll hit a card that allow you to draw like a windfall or something. So, um, I think three feels like the right number. Uh, three Jin Gitaxis. Uh, this card is amazing because although it doesn't fly or have haste, what it does do is prevent your opponent from really responding to it. So, 
Uh, if you don't know what this card does, it counters their first spell each turn, so they can't just like wrath, or they'd need to play something into a doom scar, or like have two, uh, you know, spot removal spells to target it because the first one's going to get countered. So that does really well. It also copies your spell, so you can chain invokes with it that way too. And then the last one is uh, Inferno of the Star Mount, which is also legendary. Um, this one is awesome because it's just. It can't be countered, and it's big and hasty and pumpable, so it just kills people out of the blue. Sometimes there were multiple games where I had done, I had gotten an attack with one big creature, and the opponent had stabilized, got rid of it, and were basically down to like eight or something, and maybe kind of let their guard down or whatever, and then I just cast this out of the blue and killed them, pumped it, and killed them with it. So, uh, yeah, it, it's. It's a great card for this deck also. Um, note that we can cast Jin Gitaxis sometimes with treasures. It has come up. Um, but yeah, so five of the eight creatures we are castable with just our lands, and then we can occasionally cast Jin Gitaxis. So yeah, I mean, this is the deck. This is uh, my favorite. Like I said, playing favorites here. Of all the Invoke decks I made, this was definitely my favorite. And uh, some of these games are just insane. This deck was a blast to play. So, uh, well, I don't think it is a uh, finished product by any stretch. There's definitely um, a lot of things we could do to maybe adjust it. Uh, it's so much fun, and it's doing well. It was consistent, so this is one we may want to take to the ladder and see how it goes. But, all right, thank you for watching, everybody. Uh, leave comments, let me know what you like, and let's get to the games. All right, our first opponent is Sloth Mage sixty nine. Nice. All right, we are on the play, and this hand is awful. Not sure what I'm thinking about. I guess because I could foretell a Doom Star. All right, uh, much better. Put back one of these lands. Uh, not an ideal hand, but definitely better. Alright. Okay, so right away against enchantment nonsense. Foretell Doom Scar. And we're gonna need a land. Alright. So at least we can Wrath if we need to. Would love an untapped land for Windfall next turn. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, I think just uh, not wasting Doomscar here is fine. We're not under much pressure, though. They could play, what is that, Michiko's Reign of Truth and get in there and kill us. Or hit us hard, but that's fine. All right, now I think we have enough to Wrath. Pick up our fourth land, so... We can play either one of our Windfalls or the alternate casting cost on Devastating Mastery. Okay, opponent... Alright, I know that card. I've drafted it. It's really good in draft. I, don't, I haven't seen it in constructed much. Alright, I guess so while they're tapped out of blue man, I decide to uh, main phase windfall. And also so that I can play a land, of course. I don't think it's worth it here to uh, sack the treasures. So I just pass the turn back. I mean, we're not in a bad spot, really. We have um, two invoke calamities to play at instant speed, and they really aren't pressuring us much at all. We are down to 11, though. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on here. Vigilance plus... I, I don't know what opponent is up to. It doesn't seem to be a god's deck. Alright. Uh, just pass. So if they tap out for something here... So if they don't, if they don't do anything that is really scary, I can... Windfall, but if they if they play something like a Machiko's Reign of Truth or something that uh, increases their board brush, I can also um, devastating mass rate instant speed with Invoke Calamity. So yeah, I mean this is fine. Let's see. What are you doing, opponent? Okay, a shrine. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna wrap this board. I don't know if I want to. Yeah, okay. So I decided to just windfall. Pitching field, throw discovery. And now, okay, so I actually draw, actually draw a um, Doomscar so that I don't have to use Devastating Mastery. 
So this will only cost one treasure. Nice pickup. So we still have three treasures left. Two is kind of the ideal, so they can cast Jenga Taxius if you have to. All right, opponent rebuilding. Oh my goodness. How do they always have multiple backups after you kill their stuff? All right, let's put out some lands. Um, there's only four. I mean, we're at six, but... Okay, five. I can still take an attack here. I don't need to sack all these treasures, so... Yeah, so I think about playing Invoke Calamity. I'm like, well, it's not lethal, so maybe I can just wait and then see what happens. Okay, so opponent plays Snakeskin Veil, which would make this lethal, so now I have to respond. So that sucks, using all my treasures. So I'm going to play Invoke Calamity. Using Devastating Mastery from the Graveyard. Or was it from a hand? I can't... I didn't see. All right. King Tactics and play 9-9. Nine, nine. And now the first spell is going to get countered. So actually it doesn't... All right, they scoop. Uh, it doesn't counter enchantments, actually. So it wasn't... wouldn't be maybe that bad for them, but... They scoop, so we'll take it. Okay, game two on the draw. This hand is fine. Would like to hit a an untapped land so we have a turn two play. That would be uh, great, but definitely a keep. All right, mountain first. We draw a land, which is perfect. Now we can either foretell Doomscar. Or oh, discard draw. Yep, alright, that's what we choose. Okay, dragon's approach. Wow. That's a spicy one. So opponent may be on some of the same shenanigans we're on. Uh, I guess just leave mana up. For one fall. Okay, another... Alright, so next turn, whatever they have is coming for us. Let's see. Okay, foretell uh, one Doom Scar. Can leave mana up for um, Windfall. Don't need to foretell a third Doom Scar, right? Okay. Oh, I guess we're one turn away from seeing what they have. All right, so I guess next turn. All right. Yay, thrilling discovery. Now let's see what we do here. Lots of options. Um. Oh, there we go. Bring back Jenga Taxis to counter their play. I like it. Okay, so... Oh, wow. Well, very nice. Opponent gets around the Jenga Taxis tax. Very nice. All right. So they have their own Villamagus. What's fair is fair. Into Thrilling Discovery. Wow. I like opponent style. Doing the same thing we're up to. Okay. So, lots of options here. Invoke, yeah, invoke into invoke. Copying and putting a bunch of counters on. So, bring back Villamachus. Um, so, yeah, I guess one counter in Villamachus so that it's just a tad bigger than theirs and they can't block or have to chump. And then the rest on Jenga Dexes because it's going to be hard for them to kill, so... All right. Jenga Taxis copying our spells. This is beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Opponent was doing things, and we're doing them at a much higher level. Boom. <laughs> Hit another invoke. Oh, this is beautiful. Yeah, I can bring the land back and then put counters. It does. You don't need a creature as long as you have some kind of permanent. Opponent doesn't block and takes lethal. Nice. Uh, well played, opponent. All right. <laughs> Next game. Okay, game three on the draw. Yeah, wow. This hand is 
Super slow. Nothing to do till turn three. And like I said, we're on the draw. Although it will probably a lot of times be a turn four, either board wipe or bring back one of our creatures. So I guess it's a keep. All right. Opponent. It doesn't look like they're going to punish us too aggressively. Just shambling gas. All right. <laughs> Graveyard Trespasser. Wow, that's bad for business. Wow. All right, so I have doubles of both my, our creatures in hand, but I guess I decided to just discard a mountain because right now, until we deal with that, it's just going to eat. It's going to figure out what we're up to and eat our creatures. So. Yeah, this seems like not a great matchup. <laughs> Exiling our graveyard, and they probably have enough target and removal to kill our creatures. Okay, there's a farewell, which is um, getting us going to get us on the right track. Right, Field of Ruin, targeting our dual land. Okay. Uh, maybe we can get them at... Alright. Discard a card, not going to be a problem. Maybe we can get them at instant speed if they activate their Hive of the Eye Tyrant. That would be amazing, because now that they see the, the blue creature... Or am I just going to play Farewell? I say, now they see the blue creature in our graveyard... Alright, I guess just play Farewell. They need a land to attack our graveyard and remove Jenga Taxes, and they didn't get it, so... That was fortunate for us. I think I could wait and try to play it at an instant speed, honestly. Hope they play a land and animate. And then if not, I can still kill all their creatures anyways. I don't love the way I played that, but... Alright, here we go. Let's get a few more creatures in the graveyard. Now, Hive of the Eye Tyrant isn't going to be able to do a lot. I mean, it could definitely get us once or twice, but we have a lot of creatures in the graveyard at this point, plus another one, another two in hand, so... Alright, uh, no more discard... Could just play out a big creature here or invoke Calamity. Now that they have land number six, I think probably the best thing is just wait to play invoke. Hopefully they fire up the hive and then get all their creatures at once. Yes. All right. Perfect. Oh. Wait. Oh. Oh, I don't have enough red to play invoke Calamity. Oh, that was a mistake. Okay. I didn't realize that. So, I guess the plan's going to be the same this turn. Playing on tap red, and now I can play Invoke Calamity. They'll probably... I don't know. Okay. I'm surprising myself a little bit with this play. All right. Perfect. Now, they're probably going to have removal for Villamachus, but I like ta I like it that they can't do anything about it at the time, because they only had one black. Ah, right, yeah, so then they can tap onto this, which means they're not going to hit us with Hive of the Eye Tyrant. All right. Okay. Uh, leave up instant speed. Okay, so am I going to play this throwing discovery? Because I'd like to leave up instant speed farewell. No? Okay. Oh, okay. I didn't realize I was just an untapped land away. So that was actually kind of fortunate, problem. probably, though. All right, got him. Uh, farewell, yep. Yeah. Perfect, and now... Oh, okay, now they have no untapped land to deal with our big creature. So I imagine... Is there an Invoke Justice in the graveyard? Oh, there isn't, huh? Okay, that's awkward. So we're at... We're the first time in these games where we didn't have something to do. Hopefully we draw some card draw or creature or something. Okay, Professor Onyx, that's a problem. Well, I guess we have that, um... Do we have a Devastating Master in the graveyard? Okay, so we rip Invoke Justice. Yeah, that was fortunate. That was very fortunate. And I realized with Invoke Justice, they're just dead. They're just dead to Inferno of the Star Mountain plus Pumping. And I actually didn't, I accidentally didn't even play my Red Land, but it didn't matter. We still got, still have more than enough here. All right, well, that was a fortunate topic that allowed us to win that one because that was not going well, but we'll take it. Next game. Okay, we're on the play with an amazing hand. This this hand has turn four Villamachus potential, so yeah, this is excellent. All right, let's see what opponent is on. Okay. Mono red or red-black artifact. 
All right, so I decided to play a tap land to go for the turn three Seize the Spoils. Because I don't really have two cards I want to discard anyway, so I think it's fine. If I had two uh, big creatures in my hand, I'd probably play Thrilling Discovery instead, but... All right, let's see how bad they're going to punish us. We don't have a board wipe, so this could go south. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Opponent going off. Oh, and there's a farewell. Let's see, what do I decide to discard here? All right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not dead. I'm not just dead. Plus, I do have a life game card in my hand, but I have to hope they kind of don't go off too badly here. Okay, so that wasn't that bad. They didn't really do anything, so I can... I had a farewell, but decided to use Devastating Mastery instead. Although that's not good, because I didn't have a Planeswalker, so I think it's better to play uh, Farewell. If you think they may, because this deck could definitely have uh, Chandra. Alright. Okay, got Jenga Tactus in hand. Gonna wrath their one creature away at this point. Just gotta preserve life total because they're not gonna be able to deal with our guys, obviously. Once we get one to play, and there we go. Boom. How is Mono Red gonna deal with 9 9 Villamachus? Let's see. And they're not. <laughs> All right, fifth game of the video. This hand is great. Uh, we're on the draw. I would uh, stop me if you've heard this one before, but we would like to draw an untapped land. So let's see if it happens. But if it doesn't, I mean, we're still okay. Opponent on forest, forest, what? What is opponent up to? Okay. So yeah, four lands in our hand, none untapped. That's fine. Um, they're not going to punish, punish us, it looks like, with an aggressive green draw. This must be a land fill. Okay. Landfall deck. I make the Freudian slip of saying landfill when I talk about these decks a lot. Because that's where they belong. All right, get in there, opponent. Good job. So okay, Fortel Doomscar, play another tap land. Um, I feel like we're not under much threat of dying right away, so... Although these decks can explode out of nowhere, too, so... Alright. Seize the spoils and uh, another tap land, most likely. Oh, and untap land, how about that? Alright, opponent not doing anything with their whole turn 5, was it? So let's see what they have now. Scoot Swarm, okay. Uh, we're just gonna wrath all this nonsense away. Alright, yeah, go ahead, use your evolving welds. Beautiful. Uh, so we could take a hit here for sure. So it's probably just gonna be seize the spoils plus uh, foretell another doom scar because we can just take another hit. I can't even think of a card we'd be dead to. They could play. I suppose they could play a a white land and play Felidar retreat or something and pump all their guys. But for the most part, it looks like it's just green red. Boom! Look at all these creatures. They going bye bye. Get in there while you get the chance. All right, foretell a. Third Doom Scar. Or no, leave it up for Windfall. Yeah, that makes more sense. Alright. Alright, not affecting. So, opponent just not straight up not affecting the board for a couple turns in this game where it didn't really do anything. So, that's ultimately why I feel like they're probably going to lose this game. Alright. Deal with our 9 9. Velomachus. Let's see, last guy. Yeah, alright. <laughs> Noticing a pattern here when we play that guy. Okay, on the play, perfect hand, living the dream. We don't have any dual lands, which is a problem. But that does mean we can actually cast some of our spells because they don't come into play tap. Alright, so there's a snarl. Uh, on and on. What is this? Teamer wolves? Teamer werewolves, or whatever? Interesting. Okay. Wow! <laughs> Opponent going off. There's a play, huh? Alright, uh, Fortel Doom's got really not much to do this turn. Let's see what else they have. Maybe they can play something else we can wrap. Okay, 
Okay, so obviously Doomstar doesn't kill that. Okay, so... Villamachus, and then I <laughs> go back and forth between trying to kill Arlen. It's like, eh, I don't know. There we go. Another invoke to bring back Jenga taxes and pump our guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Living the dream. Boom. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I love it. All right, on the play, this hand doesn't do anything at all. I think it's a keep, but we don't have double. We don't. We only have one white source, right? So, all right, I'll put it on. Is it? We'll tell something. Okay, we draw another white land. Oh, giants. Okay. Giants is interesting, right? Because they have a lot of direct damage, which is going to be hard to kill our guys with direct damage spells, even like Squash or whatever that one that deals six damage to. Or that Saga that, that usually cleans up the board, but wow, opponent, wow. Opponent living the dream a little bit with a million cards. Uh, yeah. Okay, just cast spell Marcus? Alright. That's weird. You don't say that one often. Okay, yeah, they invoke justice, bring back. If they don't have response for this, they're just dead. Because now they're going to need... Uh, their first spell is going to get countered, so... Opponent pausing. I'm wondering if they thought... Yeah, I'm wondering if they thought they could respond and then they didn't respond to Jinka Taxius getting coming, coming into play and now they can't do anything? <laughs> okay. First spell is countered. Nope. <laughs> fail. Wow. Yeah, that one was, uh, this is how some of these games go. Okay, on the play, uh, this is one of those hands that is an easy keep, but doesn't really do anything. So, um, Fortunately, our opponents haven't been able to punish us. We haven't been up against uh, aggressive decks, really. So, opponent on blue-black ninjas, maybe? Oh, yeah. There's that guy. That plane's walking. That thing's cool. My limited experience playing with it's been great, but let's see how they deal with this. Boom. All right. Dead next turn if they don't have anything. Make them have it. They have it. All right, so now we have nothing we can do, really. All right, sees the spoils, discarding Jenga Takis, okay. So now we have Invoke Calamity, so they're, we'll just wait for them to tap out or do something, probably, and then they'll just be dead. All right, so here I can play something. Um, I can wait till the end of their turn and try Invoke Calamity. I think it's probably best to just wait, and then at the end of their turn, play Invoke Calamity, and if they have a counterspell or something for that, then just untap. And attack with Inferno or Villamachus or whatever. So, okay, attack. Whatever. I don't know what the opponent could have here. If they're going to ninjutsu some stuff or what they got going on. Okay, nothing. Just hit me with it. Sure. Uh, Suzuki draw a card. Yeah. So let's see if I bait them at the end of this turn. Let's see what they do. If they don't counter this, I'm bringing back Jenga Taxis for sure. Okay, so invoke into invoke into Jenga Taxis. Alright, let's see what they got. It's on the stack. They can respond. Okay, they didn't. I think. <laughs> Alright, well, there we go. Alright, so. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. That's it. Uh, some ridiculous games. This deck was, like I said, a blast to play. So uh, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. And I will see you next time. All right, bye.